What's going on everybody? It's your boy Kilo Loco and today we're going to be going over how to request a review in your app because let's be honest, nobody wants to download an app that doesn't really have any reviews on it. So if you have more reviews on your app, then you're actually more likely to get more users to download your app because then it shows that you know people have went through your app and then if it has a good rating, then they know that it's a pretty good app. So I'm going to show you guys how to do that. Now, this video is going to be a little bit longer. No, well, it's going to be considerably longer than it actually needs to be. I'll try to keep it still a little bit short. But the reason why it's actually going to be longer than it needs to be, because all you really need to do this is write one line of code. And that's all you really need to do. But there's a couple of um, guidelines that you want to follow. And that's what I'm going to be going over is how to implement um, requesting a review for your app and how to kind of follow some of these better guidelines so that you're requesting a, re a review for your app at the right times. So let's get into it. So um, as you can see here, this is what the app is. It's just so basic. And you're actually going to see that it has three screens. It has this landing screen and then you tap a button and then it's going to ask you, hey, are you sure you want to do this? Or there's some type of action and then you're going to tap it again and then you end up doing whatever it is that you wanted them to do whatever the, you know, the completed action is, and then you land on some other screen. So essentially the reason why we're going to be doing this is because you don't want to ask for a review right on your landing screen, right? When we had that first page that says, welcome to your cool app, you don't want to request a review right there. You want to actually request a review after the user has done something successful in the app. So you want to wait until they actually have done something that, you know, utilizes the app's functionality and it kind of proves that they actually have gone through a couple of steps and have executed what you wanted them to execute before you request a review. This way they have some familiarity with the app and they're not going to just get a review right when they, right when the app opens up and they haven't even tested it, in which case they might give you a one or a three, but we want fives. Oh yeah. So let's jump into the code real quick, or let me show you the starter project. And as always, the starter project is available in the link in the description. If you want to go ahead and um, follow that link, you could download everything there. This is the storyboards right here. And as you can see in the view controller, we don't have anything uh, quite yet. Now, what we're going to actually do is we're going to connect this, uh, this view right here the end one to the view controller just because we don't need code for either of these screens because they're just kind of um, the idea of just, you know, you have to go through a couple steps before you request a review. That's all they're there for. Now, the first thing that we re we actually want to do to start writing some code is to create a new file and create um, what we're going to call a review service. So let's do that now. All right, so now we have this file called review service, and this is where we're, we're going to put all of our code that has to do with doing reviews and, you know, um, all the, the logic that's going to make sure that we request reviews at appropriate, like, um, timing. So what I'm going to actually do is I'm going to make this a singleton because I like working with singletons. Now you could use singletons in um, dependency injection or whatever. You know, you could watch my singletons video if you want to find out why or what we're using singletons for, but I'm going to do that right now. All right, so now that we made this class a singleton, all we need to do now is create a function that's called request review. And inside that function, we're gonna write that one line of code that's actually going to um, make the, re the review screen pop up. So let's do that now. All right, so as you can see, um, we have to import store kit because what we're going to be working with is a store kit store review controller. And this has a static function on it that is called request review. This is the one line that I was talking about that we needed. And this will actually cause the pop up for the review, you know, where it says like, um, you know, we're requesting for a review and then it gives you the option to select one of the five stars. And we're going to implement this function, this request review inside of our view controller. So we're jumping back over to our view controller and we're going to essentially make um, a reference to our review service and then we're going to call request review. Pretty simple, right? And we're going to actually do that in the view did appear. All right, so as you can see, I replaced the view did load with the view did appear because we're not going to be actually using the view did load. So as soon as this view did load, 
uh, or I mean, uh, as soon as this view did appear, what we're going to do is we're going to run this review service request review, and it should pop up that screen for us. So let's check that out now. All right, so remember that um, the view controller is only attached to the last screen in this sequence. So when we see these first two screens, nothing's gonna happen. We're just making sure that our user is going through some steps before they actually get prompted. And then as you can see, we actually get the prompt that says, and join, you know, and this, this project is called request a review. So it's gonna be your project name here. And then it's gonna say tap a star to rate it. And then the user could either tap the, whatever the rating is, or they could say not now. And if we give it five, what you'll actually notice is that the submit is grayed out just simply because um, we're just testing out and you can't actually submit a review. So as soon as you go to production, this will automatically be enabled. You don't have to worry about anything further than this. It'll be all handled for you. But while you're testing, you can't submit. Just just know that. All right, so the first problem with what we just did was that as soon as we saw the you did it screen, and I'm going to just go ahead and hit cancel because that's the only thing that we could do, right? Um, as, soon, as soon as you saw this you did it, we were presented with the um, with the review screen, which is kind of like bad, um, which is kind of like bad user experience because as soon as they get presented with the you did it or whatever screen that they're going to, they're going to try to read whatever's on that screen or try to recognize whatever's on that screen, but bam, there goes a review just like right away. They didn't even get a chance to read it. So what we're actually going to do, uh, one of the first things that's going to you know be a little bit better is to actually cause a delay before it actually shows. So I'm going to go ahead and add a two second delay before we actually call this um, request review function. So let's do that now. All right, so as you can see, all I did was I created a two second deadline, added that to our dispatcher. Um, so we're waiting two seconds after that deadline. So in two seconds, we'll run this code inside of this block and we're just gonna create um, a capture list where we have a, re a weak reference to self and then we're gonna call this. Um, so now if we go ahead and run this, we won't see the actual um, review screen pop up right away will actually wait two seconds and then it'll it will request oh you saw that how it popped up twice it's because we reran it twice so we want to um remove this line of code right here because that was kind of bad <laughs> all right let's do that again and then we wait a couple of seconds and then it's going to finally fire so it gives the user kind of time uh time to like their eyes to adjust to the screen which is good and then we're requesting a review so that's a better user experience so that's one of the problems that we fixed and now what we're going to do is there's there's also a limit to how many times you can request a review you can only request a review three times in within 365 days so you want to make sure that you're spacing out these, these review requests because if a user goes through this action three times the one that we just went to went through in production your your pop-up will actually no longer be popped up and um that's not a good thing because if you release another another update or you want better like you're making improvements and you want more feedback more reviews as the app gets better you're already going to use up all your reviews within within that 365 days and that's not going to be good because then your users aren't being propped, prompted until next year essentially so what we want to do is in our review service, we're going to start, um, we're going to use user defaults to check the last time that we actually made a request so that we can save that time and make sure that we're checking against that time to see, hey, has it been long enough um, before we requested that review last? So in this example, I'm going to say, let's wait one week before we do another review. All the code will stay in the, in the same spot inside the view controller. But first, we, we just want to make sure one week has passed before we uh, request that again. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, create um, a variable that's going to use user defaults to check that value and then or, or to save that value and then we're going to create a function that's going to check that value to see if we should be requesting a review again all 
All right, so as you can see, we have a lot going on right here, and I'm gonna break it down um, one piece at a time. So let's start up here um, at the top, and I and I did say that we were gonna be using a function, but um, what I actually meant was we're gonna be using computed properties. Uh, so sorry about that. <laughs> um, okay, so the first thing that we're going going to do is we're going to have last request be the date that we're going to be saving we're going to be using user defaults and as you can see i just created a reference to user defaults right there so last request is going to be of type optional date um, because we may or may not have um, saved a date already so obviously the very first time that we're going to do this we wouldn't have made a request yet so the re the, the date would actually be nil so what we're going to do is we're going to check um, user defaults for a value of I just like to make my strings for user defaults a little bit more um, verbose, just so that there's no possibility of anything else being called the same thing within the app. So I, I just called it review service dot last request. You could have called it just last request or request or whatever you want it, poop, I don't care. And then we're just gonna cast that as a string or as a date, optional date right there. And then for the set, we're gonna just make sure that we're saving two user defaults. So right up here we were reading, over here we're setting so defaults set the new value that's being set for the last request and then um, for the same key because we want to be making sure that we're using the same key or else everything's out of whack right uh, so wh what we're going to be doing is we're going to be checking um, has it been over a week since the last time that we made a request so I just created this um, this co um, computed property right here called one week ago just so that things are a little bit easier and then um, we have this calendar uh, this is essentially going to um, do minus seven days from today, from this instant right now. So if it's minus seven days from this moment right now, then um, that's what that date will essentially be. And we're, you're going to see that we're going to be checking that right um, very soon. So then I made this property right here called should request review. So should we be requesting a review or not? Um, if last request is equal to nil which means we've never made a request before then yes we should be making a request if if last request isn't equal to nil and it actually does have a value let's let's grab that value right and we're going to check is last request a smaller number than one week ago because remember dates are kind of just like numbers from 1970 so whichever one's smaller uh, or we want to make sure that last request is smaller essentially further in the past than one week ago and if that's correct then we're going to return true or else we're just going to return false and we should not be making another request so now what we need to do is we need to apply that logic to this function real quick all right so now we're just going to check should we be requesting this review yes or no and then what we also want to do is after we make this request we have to make sure that we're setting the last request this value right here to this moment in time when we are calling this function. So let's do that as well. So this will make sure that we're updating that last request value and saving that to user defaults. So let's go ahead and run it again. And what we're going to notice is that when we run uh, uh, that we run this, it's going to show us the review as we expect it to, um, because this is essentially the first time that we're going to be checking user defaults for it. So we can do not now, it doesn't matter whether we gave it a review or not, but as long as we um, dismiss it, or since we have already called this function, now it's saved to user defaults. And now since it's been, um, since it hasn't been a week yet, then when I go back over here, you're gonna actually notice that nothing happens because it, it doesn't actually do this uh, should request review. Oh, this actually failed. So let's go ahead and make sure that, um, we unwrap this properly. Um, oh, I made a mistake. It's not by setting, it's by adding. My bad. And this is two. It was the wrong function, my bad. So you just wanna make sure that you get the right function. It should be um, calendar current date by adding um, value to date. So let's go ahead and try that one more time. And we're gonna notice that it's not going to be called. You're not going to get any of that gobbity gook down there in the logs because this should request review is actually failing. So it's going to actually return and we're never going to hit this until at least one week passes. Now, you can come up with the, the, the date, however many days that you want to wait, 
one week, one day, one month, whatever. It's all up to you. You come up with that. Now, um, the last thing that I just want to go over real quick is if you want it to do a written review. Now, the UI for a written review is usually handled by the user or not by the user, by the app creator, which is you, the dev developer. And you would usually do a pop up like, are you enjoying this app? And if you are enjoying the app, then uh, what you would do is if yes, then they would be um, taken to the actual app store. This isn't something that would actually happen within the app. Um, and then if they hit no, then maybe you have like a contact us. That's all completely up to you. That's outside of the scope of this, um, uh, this tutorial today, but I'm going to show you how to open up your app. So what we're going to do is we're going to modify a request review to say, is this going to be a written review or is it just going to be a regular review? Uh, this way you can have like a dynamic function throughout your app and maybe one in one spot, you only want to do, um, a regular review. But in other spots, you want to do a like you want them to write a written review. So just depending on what you want. So let's go ahead and add that into our app or into this function right now. All right, so let's go over what I what I did. So as you can see, I added this um, variable up here that's called is written review and it's of type bull. Now by default, I'm just going to set it to false just because, you know, I'm going to in my app, I would just request a regular review. So I, I want it to def default to just doing this type of um, this type of request. But if I set it to true, then it's going to run this code and this is what's going to happen. We want to create a app store URL. And as you can see, this is just a standard um, written review URL. Um, once again, if you want uh, the code link is in, in the, the description, all you have to do is change the ID out to whatever your app ID is. And you can find that in the actual app store. Um, I don't think that you can get it until it's actually submitted in the app store. So for your first version, you actually wouldn't be able to include reviews, but in like 1.1, then you would be able to get the um, app ID and you can just get that by checking that um, the app store on your desktop and or you could do on the desktop or you could try to share your app and then it would show you you your ID. There's also a couple other ways you got to look it up, but you would just change out these X's for your app ID. And then it's, this is how you would get to the written review section. And then all this is going to do is this app is this, um, this constant that I made up here called app. And all it is is shared, um, UI application dot shared. And I think it just looks a little bit cleaner, sexier that way. So now what we'll do is we'll test this out. Now it's, it's obviously hasn't been a week, so I'm going to actually um, comment this out so we're not checking if it's been a week or not real quick just so that we can test it and request review and I'm going to say is written and I'm going to just set that to true so let's go ahead and run this and you're going to just see that there is different behavior we won't be able to actually test this out um, because since we're on a simulator uh, the simulator doesn't actually have an app store to go to so it's actually going to say Safari cannot open the page because the address is invalid. So it may be a, a, a valid address, but since there's no app store, it can't be opened. So um, just keep that in mind, but it will work on a real device and it will work on production. So that's going to be all for today, guys. I hope you enjoyed how I made such a simple topic become this very long topic. Uh, if you like this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. I'll try to find more videos uh, or more topics that are similar to this. If you like the super long explanations, let me know. And I will always give you those super long explanations and explain everything very thoroughly. All right, that's gonna be enough for today, guys. Thank you for coming in and make sure you keep coding passionately. Later.